in the name of Te Uraura Abel. Tēnāko, Mr. Speaker. Te manuhiri, tēnākoe. Ko tāku pātai, he pātai ki te mini te monga take tai au. To the Minister of Conservation, does he agree with the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment, Dr. Jan Wright, that joint decision-making with the Minister of for Energy and Resources on Mining, uh, mining the Conservation Estate, undermines the role of the Minister of Conservation as guardian of that estate, and how will he respond to her advice to Parliament that conservation should take precedent? Mr. Speaker. Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Uh, Mr. Speaker, no, I do not agree. The joint decision making only applies to significant Tier 1 mining applications, and I actually find it both constructive and useful to have the input of the Minister for Energy and Resources and the expertise of his ministry into such decisions. I note the uh, Ruth Dyson interjecting opposite. It would just be useful if her and Damien O'Connor were on the same page on such issues. We are a balanced government that wants jobs and growth, as well as conserving our special places and species. Over a third of New Zealand is in public conservation land. That includes a huge amount of minerals, and this government is of a view that we should use those minerals where it can responsibly be done. Supplementary, Supplementary question to Urara Flavel. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Minister investigate the opportunity to set aside the 55 ecological areas that are currently in the conservation estate and include them in Schedule 4, as recommended by the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment? Uh, Mr. Speaker, Dr. Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, yes, I am open-minded about uh, reviewing areas of stewardship land that are of high value. I note the Member of Parliament for Auckland Central has advanced the stewardship land on Great Barrier Island, being upgraded to a conservation park, and that is an idea that I'm advancing. Not three years, she raised it last year, and uh, Labor was in government for nine years and did nothing. Uh, our government's view is that we do need to protect those very special areas, but that we also need to acknowledge that there are significant parts of our public conservation land that are old gravels, ex-mining areas and the like, and that it would be foolish to lock it all up. Supplementary question, Jamie Lee Ross. Does the Minister agree that it is too easy to gain a consent to mine on conservation land? Mr Speaker. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, no I don't. We need only look at the approval process for the Bathurst mine on the Deniston Plateau to realise how slow and how difficult it is to get consent for mining on public conservation land. The application for that mine was originally lodged in 2008. I'm embarrassed to note that there was over 30 hearings before commissioners, before the High Court, the Court of Appeal, the appeal at the Supreme Court over that particular application, and I actually think it shows the opposite, and that it is very difficult to get consent to mine on public conservation land. Supplementary, Supplementary question to Urara Flavel. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Minister respond to the recommendations of the report with proposals to ensure that mining operations on conservation land provide a net conservation benefit as well as compensating for damage they cause? Uh, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think the Parliamentary Commissioner's uh, environments reports around net conservation benefit is where the new thinking is moving around trying to find this right balance. Uh, that was adopted, for instance, with the Bathurst mine, uh, where the department's been able to secure tens of millions of dollars of uh, additional pest control work that will result in thousands more Kiwi. Uh, as compared with a very small number that are affected by the mind. Uh, and so that is why my department is very open-minded about the net conservation benefit approach. Question number two, Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Prime Minister, does he stand by his statement that, quote, for most New Zealanders, an indication of how well the economy is doing is whether or not they can keep up with the cost of living? And if so, is he satisfied that they currently can? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, yes, and we have officially.